Hello, everyone. Uh, thanks for coming to our webinar today between MCT and Lender Price. We're excited you're here. Uh, we're going to go ahead and do our typical three minute wait for more folks to arrive and get in the room. And after that, we'll go ahead and get started. So bear with us. Thanks. All right, that looks like about good. Welcome everyone. Uh, thanks for coming to our webinar today, Strength in Pricing and MSR Strategies. Uh, this is a joint webinar between MCT and Lender Price, and we're happy you're here. My name is Ian Miller. I'm the Chief Marketing Officer of MCT, and um, I'm honored to do the introductions for the webinar today. So before we get started, a couple quick logistics. Um, we've got a questions panel that should show up in your GoToWebinar control panel. Uh, please use those questions um, and submit those questions anytime during the course of the webinar. We'll be keeping an eye on them. We may address them as we go, or we may hold them for a Q&A section that we'll do at the very end of the webinar. Uh, if we don't get to any questions, we'll make sure that we follow up with you afterwards. Aside from that, the recording and the slide deck from today's webinar will be distributed shortly after the webinar, certainly this afternoon. Um, so if you have to leave early or if um, someone was interested but couldn't make it, you can feel free to forward it to them. With that, let's uh, go ahead and, uh, and dive in here. Um, so in June, MCT and Lender Price launched a collaboration to provide mortgage lenders using Lender Price's PPE with loan level MCT MSR values. Um, MCT's industry-leading MSR grids allow lender price PPE clients to be more granular, profitable, and efficient when generating their front-end borrower pricing and managing their MSR portfolio. And this webinar was going to dive deeper into how that collaboration can help lenders strengthen their pricing and their MSR strategies. And we're also going to jump into a lot of interesting things about the MSR market and um, you know uh, the related uh, mortgage environment of today. So. Um, we're happy you're here. With that, um, we can go to the next slide and I'll introduce our presenters. All right, our awesome guests from the uh, Lender Price team. We've got Paul Orlando. He is the EVP and Chief Strategy Officer at Lender Price, focusing on leading several technology initiatives and overseeing corporate strategy, product innovation, and process enhancements for Lender Price. Paul, welcome. We're happy you're here. Thank you, Ian. Glad to be here and looking forward to the discussion today. Great. Uh, also from Lender Price, we have David Caldwell, longtime friend of MCT. Uh, David is the executive vice president at Lender Price. He's focused on growing the cloud native technology provider. David has held many leadership positions at various technology providers in his 25 years of financial services industry experience. David, welcome. Uh, you're muted, David. Yes. I'm also excited to be here, and I really look forward to an engaging discussion. Thanks, David. 
Um, all right, uh, most people probably know our MCT team, but I'm gonna go ahead and give them the introduction treatment anyway. Um, our MCT folks presenting today are Azad Rafat. He's the Senior Director of MSR Services at MCT. He's focused on the operational, quantitative, and technology development aspects of the business unit. Azad is a 30-year mortgage industry veteran with extensive experience in all aspects of mortgage servicing rights. Uh, welcome, Azad. Uh, thank you, Ian. Happy to be here. Great. Last but certainly not least, we've got David Burris. David's the director of MSR Sales at MCT. He's focused on outreach, acquisition of new clients, and serving those clients well. He's an MSR subject matter expert in his own right and a 30-year mortgage industry veteran. With that out of the way, David, I'll let you go ahead and take it away and share the agenda and go on into the presentation. That's great. Thank you so much, Ian. And of course, we're very excited to partner with um, to to be uh, associated with the Lender Price team and all of their efforts to make uh, solutions for their clients uh, more efficient and more streamlined and more profitable. And that certainly fits in with exactly the the way that we've come together with them on their uh, on their services. So today, what we'll cover are general. Uh, first of all, just give a general update of the MSR market. A lot of things are changing, particularly as rates start to fall. Uh, we, we're going to take a look at that. Um, Azad's going to kind of give us some color on that. Fair value versus SRP trending. It's just really an important aspect as you start to think of MSR as a part of your pricing and how you handle that strategically. Effective balance sheet management principles. Uh, this is really about if you're going to continue to hold on to a portfolio how do you manage it? How do you build it? How do you maximize its value? We'll talk about that. Key benefits of retaining MSR, we'll, we'll touch on that as well. Uh, and Lender Price will give an overview on the MCT collaboration. And then we'll be looking at Lender Price clients and what how they're currently leveraging weekly grids. And then we'll talk to you about how to develop a granular or loan level based pricing strategy. Uh, so that you can really maximize the the values that uh, that we're providing for for lender price. So with that, we're ready to go to the next slide. And I think Azad, this one is yours. Yes, thank you, David. Um, MSR market right now values and prices remain very competitive, remain very uh, strong, even when rates have dropped uh, roughly about 100 basis points since the end of June uh, and even July, uh, float income rate uh, retreated by about 100 basis point as well. Given those facts, you would expect the values of MSR to decline uh, sharply. That may be true for recent production. Anything that was produced over the last year and a half, you would see more volatility within uh, that, those vintages. However, vintages from 2020 through 2022 you will see a minimal impact on those values. However, if rates continue to decline from the current level, which is roughly between six and six and a quarter, we would anticipate some uh, further decline uh, in values across all vintages. But so far, uh, on the bulk side of things, we're seeing very competitive pricing. We're seeing uh, you know, on average, I'd say between eight to 10 bidders on any given uh, bull trade that is being put out to market. So, uh, and the reason for that is economic one-on-one supply demand issue. We're seeing very low production, very anemic over the last uh, uh, year to two years. So that is driving uh, MSR holders to replenish uh, whatever uh, MSR they currently hold. Even though when prepayments are so low, but given the fact most of the loans on their books is uh, around 4% and maybe lower, the, prince, the scheduled principal balance that, is, that the borrowers are paying is forcing uh, those uh, MSR holders to think about what kind of uh, pools they have and they have to go out and buy MSR because they can't get enough from the production side. Uh, delinquency rates are, are very, very low, but we are seeing a slight uptick month over month for, for the last six months or so. 
and there are multiple reasons for that. Obviously, even with the loans, within the loans uh, from you know, 2020, 2021, we're seeing a slight increases in delinquency. And the reason for that, I mean, if you look at historically, if you look at those vintages, we're seeing an upward trending in the tax and insurance payment being added to those loans. So if a loan started out, let's say back in 2020 with an average payment of $2,000, most likely, uh, and based on the analysis we conducted, uh, the current payment for the same loan is about $2,500 to $2,700. So it's about 25 to 30% increase for that same loan. And so that puts a strain on the borrower. And you add uh, the consumer debt level right now we're seeing, uh, that adds another strain on the borrowers. And so that's probably the reason leading to the slight increases in delinquency. Uh, prepayments, again, very, very low. But you couple that with uh, scheduled principal balance decline, uh, it almost doubles. On average, we're seeing for the last year, we're seeing about 4 to 5% prepayment rate, uh, actual prepayment rate. But if you add the principal pay down, that is doubling it to about 8 to 10%. So that's what's driving those uh, large servicers to hold and buy uh, more MSR. Uh, I, I touched base on the tax and insurance, and that's going to continue. Uh, I mean, like today, there is a hurricane in Florida, and most likely insurance premium next year is going to go up by another 20 to 30%, if not more. So that will add a lot of pressure on Florida residents across the state, not just in one particular area. Uh, again, I talked about the consumer debt, and that's going to uh, create risk and rewards. It's going to create risk uh, for delinquency side and then rewards for the incentive to refinance. But we're seeing more and more borrowers going into second loan, second mortgage or HELOC right now. But the equation will change uh, once rates start, you know, going a little bit below 6%. Uh, bulk MSR market, again, is very healthy, and that should continue for the next uh, three, four to four months until rates hit below, you know, 6%. That could change the dynamic. But for now, it's business as usual. Uh, one thing, recapture impact, uh, we've seen... A lot of large companies use that as a leverage uh, and an and, and incentive to go out, regardless what the current market rate is, they go out and buy loans, pay a premium, and we see that on the SRP side, because they have the capacity to absorb uh, any refinancing and they'll be able to make uh, some profit on that. But again, uh, anybody wants to get into that, just uh, need to be cautious. It takes a lot of efficiencies and a lot of uh, infrastructure to get that done. And David, uh, turn it to you to talk about the retained release uh, analysis. Thanks, Azad. I appreciate that. Yeah, we, we wanted to show this slide for a couple of reasons. One is is that, um, <laughs> well, I guess since before COVID, MSR was a pretty sleepy area of the market. But certainly since COVID and optionality has occurred, um, the uh, retaining and releasing has uh, that whole marketplace has really grown. What we do to really demonstrate that is we track this of our clients. We have over 300 clients and we track on a weekly basis the overall decisions that they make. What percentage of the business are they sending to aggregators and what uh, percentage of the business are they retaining? And what, what is very revealing is, is this is not a static market. This is a market that changes dynamically week by week by week. And so it only pays to highlight the strategy of understanding what the values are that you're using and the opportunities that the market might hold based on on, on uh, what the retained released levels are that week. Just to touch on the screen here, it's saying that it's, I'm gonna round the numbers, it's roughly 70, 30, 70% 70 being released, 30% being retained. It was only a couple of weeks ago, it was 80-20. And then, of course, a few weeks after that, it, we were looking at 60-40. So we're, we're, we're watching a dynamic marketplace that really does um, 
beg your attention and the more attention you pay to it, I think the more the sharper your pricing. And that's exactly why we're here with uh, with Lender Price. So uh, Azad, I think you've got the next slide, so I'll turn that over to you. Yes. Yeah. yeah, thank you so much. Uh, MSR ownership, it has a lot of advantages and obviously disadvantages, but I will not go into the dis uh, disadvantages. I mean, we saw back during COVID, uh, when uh, mortgage production, I'm sorry, mortgage uh, prices for new origination just uh, tanked. Uh, uh, the companies that had servicing uh, options, they decided to retain instead of selling uh, those loans. And currently, they reap those benefits because what, they, what happened in the current environment for the last uh, couple of years, almost couple of years, Low production uh, reduced their profits on the origination side. However, the servicing portfolios that they carry help them carry their business and keep their business afloat. So that was a good thing. On average, for any loan you service, for each loan you service, you should expect to get about uh, 40 to $60 per loan per month. So if you think of it as an annuity stream, uh, month over month, and it's very, very healthy, uh, depending on the size of the portfolio. Again, you could use that as a hedge against the downturn cycles we've been experiencing for the last year and a half. Uh, origination is down, profits are down, you know, but the service and portfolio really kept companies and businesses afloat. And, and also allows you to retain loans. It allows you uh, an alternative solution to your secondary strategy. Uh, if you can't release the loan, you don't get the right price, you could retain that loan for better days. And on top of that, it adds a franchise value to the business. I mean, it definitely adds premium. Uh, to the value of the company as you grow, or even if you maintain a certain size portfolio. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, what, what I would like to talk about is the comparison between uh, service release premiums and fair value. We see a lot of noise coming in from the market, and we've been monitoring this market for years. And we are very diligent in how we create the weekly grids that we have. We call them fair value grids for a reason, because they represent uh, moderate fair value levels. It fits, I won't say it fits every company in each company's strategy, but at least it gives you an idea what a reasonable fair value looks like at any given time. Uh, on the other hand, and, and it's more stable. On the other hand, if you look at the red line on top, that represents the aggregator pricing, and it's, it can be very volatile. I mean, as recent as early August when rates start coming down, the SRP levels literally drop by half a multiple, you know, within a day or two. And then it stayed low for a few days, but then it started creeping up again, and now we're back to about the same level of about half a multiple above uh, uh, fair value. Even though you can see blue line, which represents uh, mortgage rate, even though the mortgage rates are declining, but the fair value is still stable, uh, SRP value is stable to some point. Uh, and the reason for that, because we haven't seen the influx of refinancing or purchase activity, even though they increased a little bit, but the supply of loans remain very low and keeping those values steady. Uh, one of the things we need to be careful at and distinguish between uh, the two, fair value is different from SRP. SRP values, uh, aggregators can substantiate why they pay for those loans at those levels, and they can capitalize those loans at the level that they see fit. But we've seen over time some companies, independent lenders, uh, going out and capitalizing if they can retain the loan, yeah, use the same SRP grids to capitalize the loan. That may be okay in certain circumstances. However, it creates an enormous volatility on the balance sheet income statement if rates move you know, one way or the other. 
And we've seen that over the last three weeks. Those loans that were uh, companies were using SRP grids to retain the loan at and capitalize them, they saw an enormous shift in value from a month ago. But if you use the fair value grid, it's more stable and less volatile, and it has less impact and consequential impact on the overall balance sheet uh, and P&L management. And next slide, please. Uh, and, and based on what I just described, we have to monitor uh, the retained release pricing at any given time because especially the release price, it could change within hours. I mean, sometimes you wake up in the morning, you see a price and something happens in the afternoon. By the end of the day, prices have tanked uh, half a multiple, quarter multiple. And that's what we do. We monitor... Uh, Every day, what's going on in the market? We contact, uh, you know, colleagues and friends in the industry to see what's going on in the market, and we update those grids based on what's going on to make sure whatever you utilize to retain or decide to release uh, the values you're getting, the price levels you're getting are appropriate. And it's very, very crucial uh, to have a granular pricing approach. I mean, if you look at two loans, uh, same, you know, balance, same interest rate, same uh, most of characteristics, but then if you look at the FICO or LTV, they're different. You don't want to capitalize the loan or make a decision to release the loan based on uh, one number. So you got to look at the granular pricing, how it's getting impacted through you know, the LLPA, the LTV, how, the level of LTV or level of FICO score. Those are the things you want to look at. At the same time, we see a lot of companies focus on high FICO, low LTV loans as a premium loan. However, but there are a lot of opportunities within uh, slightly lower FICO, slightly higher uh, LTV. And we've seen successful, you know, strategies uh, devised by some companies utilizing those, uh, you know, different approaches. Uh, and, and what you want to do, you want to minimize the volatility to your balance sheet and income statement. It's very, very critical. Uh, again, if you choose to decide SRP to capitalize loans that you retain, uh, you, you're adding uh, volatility risk to that. But if you use a fair value or a moderate approach, uh, the volatility is there, but is going to be significantly lower than if you go with the SRP level. And uh, you, you have to continue to monitor uh, portfolio uh, amortization, you know, what's going on, delinquency level, prepayment level, uh, uh, principal pa balance pay down, all those factors impact your portfolio. So you just have to keep monitoring it. And at the same time, uh, monitor uh, concentration. Uh, are you, uh, are your production is concentrated in one group or you know a couple of groups, i.e., uh, same balance, same LTV, same FICO score ranges? Uh, you want to diversify, just like holding an equity uh, portfolio. You want to diversify. You don't want to concentr have concentration in one area. MSR is basically the same thing. And also look at the bulk activity. I mean, it pays to manage your portfolio through either a bulk acquisition, whether it's a small acquisition or a large acquisition, or even entertain a sale of that to recalibrate the portfolio or rebalance the portfolio, if you may say. Uh, and I, I would like to turn it to David to talk about the, uh, a comprehensive, wholesome strategy using bulk uh, and uh, grids uh, to manage balance sheet. Yeah, this is, uh, thank you, so I really appreciate that. That This is probably one of the key things that we really work with our client base on and uh, and which really will add to kind of the the value equation uh, in using your, uh, your lender price uh, tools as well. What we've found, it's, it's in interesting to me that many of our clients had initially kind of taken a pieces parts approach. I really don't even think it had really thought about it. They're, they got their grids from one place. 
they took another approach in terms of how they decided to put a value on the loan when they booked it into their portfolio. And then, of course, they would send it away to a third party provider to get a value. And very often they were kind of mystified. Uh, they've told us the, of the values that they got back. But what we're helping our clients do is, is help them strategize through all three of those pieces so that you can use a tool that like our grids uh, to know exactly what the assumptions are that you're using, the pricing levels that you're using and why. And then that, then that equates to what happens at time of loan sale. And we can give you accurate live MSR values when you go to book that loan. And then when that, then, then you start to go to take that to get a, a third party valuation on it, then it's going to make some sense because you know the, the assumptions that you've used, you've really helped eliminate some of the volatility in the marketplace by, by looking at uh, having a consistent strategy across the, the life cycle of the loan from the time of pricing to acquisition to going into your portfolio. So this is really kind of how we're helping our clients, first of all, be aggressive to buy what they want to buy based on their own business decisions and then also stabilize their values and, and know exactly where they're at when that comes along. So with that, I think it's time for the next slide. And then uh, Azad, is this one yours? Or no, this is uh, no. David? Is this David, you? David Caldwell. Yeah, this is this David. Is, okay. This is ours. And I just want to say welcome again, everybody that's on the webinar. Um, we have had a long-term relationship uh, with MCT, um, but a lot of people are not aware of of who lender price is um, and how working with MCT we feel is a strategic uh, collaboration for us because of some of our service offerings. So I just wanted to give people, I'm not going to spend a ton of time on this, just to give you a little bit of lay of the land about lender price, uh, customer growth, we're you know over 350 customers across all our product lines. Uh, market share based on 2023 funded unit volume is about 11.3%. Um, just so you know, the largest bank, the largest credit union, uh, I think the largest servicer, but definitely top five servicer, and the largest lender in the country all use our pricing technology. Okay. Um, the only other thing I wanted to say is from a technological recognition perspective, from an award recognition perspective. Um, we were the first and only PPE to ever win the ICE Lenders Choice Award. That was this year. Um, we're a three-time NAM Technology Provider of the Year, Housing Wire, et cetera. So our technology has been recognized. That's one point. The second point is, is that we're a proven platform with some of the largest lenders in the industry. Um, and the last thing I'll bring up is, is that we still believe that technology is critical, but service is key. And so we have a tagline for service trumps technology. Um, if you go to the next slide. Okay, so let's talk about specifically our collaboration with MCT. Um, currently, we have 30 joint customers uh, across various product lines and we're continuing to grow. And we, inter we our collaboration and integration is not just for MSRs, but that's one of the key fronts that we do collaborate with MCT on. So we have the automated MSR uh, integration, um, which is really the primary purpose of this discussion. The use cases for our customers are really threefold. One, um, we also have a base price creation tool where the MSRs, we automatically ingest the MSRs. Paul's going to talk about that. And that's one of the key factors for driving, obviously, price creation. Another, another benefit for us, uh, for part of this collaboration, is you heard Azad talk about recapture. And we have a servicing portfolio analysis tool primarily focused on increasing recapture mining your servicing portfolio we currently today have uh several clients and i'll just one not to be named that runs 
anywhere from five to nine million loans through our bulk servicing portfolio uh, pricing and eligibility tool every single night to identify recapture opportunities. Well, that same tool can also leverage the MCT MSR grids to do servicing portfolio valuations as well. And we can compare the valuation to the pricing of what they're, if they're going to look to refinance a loan or identify borrowers for home equity or whatnot, they can, they can actually leverage our tool both ways, okay? Um, we've also worked extensively with the MCT team. They're one of our advisors to for lock policy best practices um, for both current and prospective uh, customers. And we also integrate to the MCT uh, marketplace platform, I call it BAM, for large investors such as Chase Bank. So those are just some of the ways that we currently collaborate with MCT. We're going to talk specifically, though, today about MSR. So at this point, I'm going to turn it over to Paul to get into a little bit more detail about that. Thanks, David. So a few years ago, we started creating what we call our base price solution. And what that allows our clients to do is to easily create their base price and get that into the product and pricing engine. Through the tool, a client can easily move from downloading the coupon, current coupon prices, to having their pricing live in the PPE within a five minute time frame. So as markets are going to continue to be volatile, as we continue to see decreases in rates, our clients have the ability to push a button and have new rates in our product and pricing engine within five minutes. One of the ways that we can do that and do it accurately is by having the MSR tables right within the system. When we were working to create this product, we reached out to MCT because of our uh, collaboration efforts on other products and talked with them about ingesting the MSR tables directly from them. So we worked with uh, Azad and created a standard template where if clients are using one rate for all of their uh, channels, or if they have individual MSR multiples based on the channel, we have different formats that they can push over to us. And, and again, it's a simple CSV upload right into the system. As we continue to look at ways to enhance our processes, we'll be looking to create a, a API so that every day we can just call out to their system and pull in via API all the new rates for our clients. So we have both government and conventional rates that we receive from them. On the government side, we start with the uh, base rate table and you can see that we have all the interest rates listed, the servicing fee that's associated with that, and then that links to a servicing multiple table. If a client decides that, for instance, they want to uh, target something to a 69 fee instead of a 19, they can come in here, again, make a quick change, and that'll update the rest of the system for the calculations. If we go to the next screen, so this is an example of one of the tables. So this is a Gini 1569 strip that we're bringing in. And we use a variance from PAR analysis. And with this, we're pulling in the tables that we get directly from MCT. And in this particular case, this is one where the client is using the same multiples for all their business channels. That's why at the top it says all. You can see that PAR is right uh, near the bottom at, and it's got a 3.565 multiple. And then from there we go up and down the stack. We have a PAR rate table within the system as well. And those values are easily uploaded via a CSV file 
or they can manually go in and uh, type them in. We recently added the ability to tie uh, the par rate to an index value. So if a client wanted to uh, base their par rates off of a SOFR index, let's say, they could say SOFR index plus a, a margin or a spread gives them a par rate. So every day when they go and generate new coupon pricing, it pulls in the index values and automatically updates the par rates within the system. Which again, you know, as Azad and David were talking, the more accurate your MSR values are, the better pricing you'll have within the system. So clients who update their uh, MSR values once a quarter, once a month, are not going to have the same advantages as someone who is updating them uh, weekly and or on the fly, uh, which is where we want to move to in the future. Next slide, please. So all of the information that we bring into the system runs through a best X model. And from that, what you can see here is, is the final buildup of the price. From the best X model, it brings in uh, what we call the adjusted market price. Again, we start with a base coupon price. We do an evaluation of whether or not it's better to um, maximize servicing or maximize uh, the uh, buy up buy down grids. And from there, we come up with the adjusted market price. We then add in uh, roll cost and lock day adjusters to account for the uh, interest spread between the day of pricing and the day of delivery. And then uh, the next section is where we have our MSR adjusters. So, based on the tables that we had in the previous two screens, we do calculations and come up with what the MSR adjustment is. We then allow them to add a channel subsidy, giving us the final price. All of this looks like, you know, there's a lot of work on the client side. In all reality, once the client is set up, which only takes typically a couple of days to do, all they have to do is come in and hit three buttons and the system does all the rest of the work. Again, that's made easier because of our uh, collaboration with MCT and the ability to pull those rates directly in. So, do we have any questions, Ian? Awesome. Thank you very much, Paul. Excellent work, and, and to all of our presenters, thank you so much. Uh, at this point, we'd love to welcome any audience questions uh, that you might have. And um, before, you know, while while we're getting those submitted, I just want to um, draw your attention to the contact information here on the page. If you're interested in discussing how you can improve your pricing and MSR strategies, or having a consultation with any of our experts here on the line, we'd love for you to reach out to either MCT or Lender Price. You know, right. David, had, David, I was just going to say, David had touched on briefly, you know, other ways that we collaborate together. And I think one that is um, really important is our recent work to pull in bulk bidding on correspondent loans. So we're able to pull directly through an API uh, bulk pricing information from MCT pull it into our system, price those, send them back. And again, through a API, we're able to allow the MCT uh, hedging clients the ability to commit those loans with our correspondent investors. So again, as David said, we're always looking for ways that we can leverage the technologies that MCT has and the technologies that we have and uh, build a better uh, solution for all of our clients. Excellent. Well, I do have a question that just came in here. Um, it looks like maybe we'll have the MCT team start with this one, but it seems like it could be for both groups. Um, if I receive grids from another provider, how would MCT fair value grids uh, in lender price help me? 
Oh, uh, David, looks like you're muted. I'm sorry. I'll, I'll touch on that and then turn it over to Azad. I think the the first thing to look at is what type of grids are you getting? And this is a question we, this is one of the things we look at our clients often. Azad touched on it in his presentation, but very often people are getting grids from all the large major aggregators and those SRPs are really at market value or giving at the top uh, level value for that MSR, mainly because of all the business drivers that exist within that company, but really don't pertain to the company that's actually trying to, to sell the loan. So, um, and what we do is we really go out of our way to really make sure and touch a lot of touch points throughout the industry to make sure we're coming up with a fair value. So Azad, you might want to touch on all the different touch points we use to make sure and create a fair value. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, thank you, David. Uh, uh, great question. Uh, just like David mentioned, uh, there are a lot and uh, plenty of grids floating around and really they don't necessarily fit your business strategy or your production profile. Uh, our fair value grids are designed to be somewhere in the middle uh, that covers, I'd say, probably 80% of uh, clients out there. However, uh, the remaining 20% uh, requ request uh, what we call customized grids. And what we do with the customized grids is we look at your production for the last 90 days, maybe 180 days, to get a sense of the profile and then we devise uh, a strategy to create grids that fit that specific profile and then you will use that to determine whether to retain or release uh, uh, those uh, loans. Yeah. So that's how we then, generally approach it. And then one other quick thing and then I'll, I'll turn it over to the uh, lender price guys. The other thing is our grids are weekly. Most people's grids are monthly or quarterly. And I, I think that's the other big topic. And Paul, I think, pointed this out. We also will update our grids if there's any major market movement that occurs during the week. And then, of course, you know, Leonard Price would automatically have those. So you're going to be up to the minute on accurate, fair value, MSR values to use. So I don't know, David, did you have anything you want to yeah. add to that? Well, actually, I think you answered that question very effectively. Uh, Ian, I wanted to answer the question. It says lender price question. Can you read that one? Yeah, sure, There's absolutely. That. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, no problem. Um, uh, so I'm considering switching PPEs. Um, the ability to have the MSR grids pass lender price is great, uh, but does lender price also support my rate sheets? And then what? Uh, separates lender price from some of the other PP providers? Okay, so that's a great question. Uh, first of all, I think one of the pieces of the question was, in addition to uh, utilizing MCT's MSR grids for base price creation, if you're using MCT to generate your base pricing, we also ingest the MCT, uh, the MCT rate sheet or pricing, if you will. So. We're actually integrated on both fronts. So if you're using MCT to generate your pricing, we got you covered. Um, the second part of that is what other differentiators um, from a lender price perspective are they versus some of the other uh, let, uh, vendors that are out there? Um, primarily, there's really a couple of key differentiators. Uh, number one, um, we have our user interfaces are completely configurable. And what that means is, is you can have different user interfaces that are broken down by user group or product type. So for example, if you start doing home equity or non-QM and you wanna make the screen for your loan originators as intuitive as, impo as possible, we actually can have those different screens created in the form of a dropdown. Um, the second thing I think that really differentiates us is the fact that um, this comes back to if you're utilizing Encompass, um, our, we were the first to go on the Partner Connect integration five years ago. And so we're a little bit further along in the breadth and granularity of how our integration to Encompass works uh, versus some other clients to streamline operations. We're also, however, integrated to 
pretty much the majority of all the LOS platforms. Um, and the third thing that I'd like to break up is uh, to point out is the one of the keys that most of our clients like about us is just our back-end configuration capabilities um, from a flexibility using natural language processing instead of if-then rule writing um, makes the secondary marketing and capital markets configuration management jobs much easier. I think another thing that's key, a key differentiator is our post-lock capability. We have a significant number of post-lock uh, APIs and functions within the system and our lock policy is fully configurable to allow you to have different functions available by loan officer or lock desk. You can also have um, different capabilities as far as who can do post lock events. And we have uh, both automated and um, manual approval of lock requests within the system. And you can choose which groups of people have each of those different options. So again, it provides flexibility there. And for some of our clients who've actually done direct API integration with us, I think we're one of the only ones that has uh, APIs for our post lock events as well. So there are a lot of things that make us unique in that regard. Oh, it, it, thank you very much. Um, go ahead. Thank you, Ian. Yeah, I was just going to say we did have one more question come in. Um, I think this one's best for you, Azad, certainly above my pay grade. What security is the most efficient to use to hedge the fair value risk of the MSR? <laughs> I'd like, uh, I wish I could say uh, this is an easy answer, uh, but it's not. Uh, uh, we see some companies use uh, treasuries or, or a combination of treasuries, uh, certain swap, and smaller companies, uh, we notice that they're using TBAs, and the reason for that uh, uh, could be the volatility of the type of asset that they carry on the book. So there is none, not one security or a mix of security that uh, you know, could mitigate the hedge issue, but depending on the profile, depending on you know average UPB, uh, uh, you know risk associated with the MSR, duration of that portfolio, all of those factors could dictate what type of security uh, you would use to hedge the portfolio. I, I hope that answer the questions, but there is none, uh, not one product or security will take care of the hedge. Uh, Ian, that's one actually where just encourage them to give us a call because yeah. as Azad was doing, it just we need to profile the client and then those uh, tools will kind of show themselves which ones are the best to use. So, yeah, wonderful. And, and, yeah. And, and to that point, actually, our model that we use for the evaluation, we have all the information built in to help uh, companies that would like to hedge to get uh, a sense of uh, uh, some of those uh, variables like convexity, duration, break even, and so forth. Excellent. Thank you very much. And, uh, and Katie, we'll be sure to follow up with you to make sure that you get a little bit more specific support. Um, that's all our questions for today. So once again, thank you everyone for attending um, our Lender Price and MCT webinar today. And to our presenters, thank you so much for sharing your expertise with our audience. And um, as I mentioned before, we'll be sending out the recording and the slide deck this, this afternoon. So thank you all and have a wonderful day. Thanks so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for coming. Thank you everyone. Bye-bye.